Hi, I'm Jaleesa Lynn with the Digital Team, and I'm here with Dr. Yi, and we're here to answer your Facebook Live questions. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. So um, the first question that came in is, um, I go to Harbor for my care. Is chronic IBS something that you treat? So IBS is not something that I treat. You, IBS is usually something that's treated by a gastroenterologist. And so we do have gastroenterologists here at Harbor who can help you out, specifically Dr. Zhao. So you can still come on in, but I specifically will not be able to help you with that. Okay. I had my gallbladder removed, then I started to have problems where they, where they sucked out. I now have three hernias, and now they hurt all the time. They pushed on my organs. I went to see two doctors. Both want me to lose 40 pounds, but I can't. I don't eat much because when I do, it makes that hurt more. I need them gone ASAP so I can get back to my old self. What can you do for me? Help. So I could definitely evaluate you. However, if two other surgeons or physicians have said that they can't help you unless you lose weight, it's probably the response that I will give you also. Um, unfortunately, I'm sorry that you're having problems with your hernias, but fixing a hernia with, in patients who are overweight or who are chronic smokers leads to basically failures of the repair. And so inevitably, even if I were to fix it or these other surgeons have fixed it, the, break, the repair would break down. That's most likely the reason why they have denied you um, the operation until you lose weight. So my suggestion would be to follow their advice, lose their weight, and then you could go see any general surgeon and I'm sure that they'd be happy to help you. All right, and I would absolutely love to know where hemorrhoids come from, how to get rid of them, and if they only come from straining. So hemorrhoids are due to um, engorgement of the veins, basically the blood supply around your rectum. And they're usually due to straining. Um, and the reason why is because you're exerting a lot of pressure in that region and pushing the blood out. And in the process, when those veins that are really close to the skin bulge out, they push the skin out. And hence, you get these bulges, basically, that you can sometimes feel in your rectum. And then sometimes they can rupture through the skin and bleed. Um, so that's where hemorrhoids come from. Okay. Um, and how do hernias occur? How does mesh input help? Why does the strength to sit up go away when you have a hernia? Mm. So hernias are a very common problem. Um, they basically, a hernia is a hole in the bag or the sac that contains all your organs. So underneath your skin, there's some fat, there's some muscle, and underneath that, there's a bag. And that bag contains all your organs. And you can get holes in, the, in that bag in two ways. In some people, we're born with them. So that your belly button is a natural hole, as well as in, oftentimes in men more than women, they're leading down into your groin, there are two holes. You can also get a hole um, because of prior surgery or because you had a C-section. For whatever reason, a hernia is a hole in that bag. Now, when you get a hole in that bag, what can happen is basically the internal organs that are inside of you can pooch through and get stuck. And if that happens, you definitely need to have surgery. Otherwise, it's an elective procedure. Now, the strength that you're talking about that you lose when you have a hernia is because the natural dynamics of your abdominal wall um, are altered by this new hole that's there that's not supposed to be there. And hence why it's harder for a lot of people to sit up because obviously you have the muscles that are coordinated to help you sit up your abs and your abdominal or your obliques um, now the dynamics of how they relate to one another has been altered by this hole. Right. <clears throat> I've been having stomach pains for over two years and no, no one knows what's wrong. What can I do to help? <laughs> That's a very open-ended question, but I'm sure that if you came in to see us at the office, we could do the workup and try and figure out where your pain is coming from. Um, obviously, that entails doing a history, a physical exam, and then some lab work and some, maybe some imaging. But all those things would depend on me seeing you in person. So, unfortunately, can't answer that over Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. um, I have cirrhosis of the liver. I go in the hospital for pains in my sides and lower stomach, and they can never figure out where the pains are from. I always go to Harbor. Um, what can I do? Um, so, cirrhosis is a difficult problem um, because it's obviously. Uh, a lifelong issue, um, specifically related to liver failure. Um, again, just like the previous question, this is something that I would have to see you in person for and do the workup with you in person in order to try and help you figure out what's going on. Uh, again, I can't do that over Facebook Live, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so what are symptoms of a hernia? So most people have intermittent pain, and usually the pain comes on when, again, 
some type of fat or an internal organ starts pooching out through the hole, and that pain is usually intermittent. If that's the case, then you can take care of that electively. However, if you have constant pain that's not going away, and by constant I mean basically 24 hours a day, and you have skin changes in the region, like the skin gets red, then you need to emergently go to the hospital, specifically the ED, and have them look you up because it can be an emergency. Definitely. And is there any way to prevent hernias? Unfortunately, that depends on whether your, your hernia is naturally occurring, like your belly button, as I was saying before, or whether it's due to previous surgery or some type of trauma, or even exertion can sometimes cause it. Um, again, it depends on the specific case. Mm -hmm. And do hernias require surgery? So, as I was saying before, the elective ones, um, it's up to the patient, and it's a discussion that myself and the patient would have, and we would come to um, basically an understanding of what is best for the patient and what the patient wants. Um, the other instances that I was talking about where, again, you're having chronic pain that's not going away, or if their skin becomes red or you're having fevers, then you emergently need to come to the hospital, and that definitely needs to have surgery. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And when can I return to work after hernia treatment? Mm. So that, a lot of that has to do with the type of work that the patient does. Um, usually after a hernia repair, we try to ask the patients not to be lifting things more than 15 pounds in weight for about four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. And so if the patient does any type of manual labor, probably out for about four to six weeks. Otherwise, if you're just sitting at a desk doing office work, some patients can go back to work as early as three days later. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. um, and how do I know if it's a hemorrhoid? Uh, so that is something that can only really be diagnosed by physical exam and so the patient themselves won't be able to figure that out because obviously they can't look back there. Mm -hmm. um, that would require coming into the office and basically being examined by myself or another trained specialist. Mm -hmm. And um, what are the surgery options for hemorrhoids? So there are basically two options. Um, they are both sur surgery obviously. One is a stapled procedure that basically ligates off the veins and um, prevents any re-engorgement of that area. And then the other operation is an open operation. It's a little bit older, um, but it is tried and true. There's a little bit more pain involved with that operation, but it definitely also takes care of the problem. Right. And are there any lifestyle changes I can do that, I can, that will relieve or prevent hemorrhoids? So hemorrhoids usually start up in our 20s because poor eating habits. Um, basically, what I can say is, again, it's due to straining. And so eating a high-fiber diet, um, using things like um, Metamucil to thicken your bowel movements will help. Um, also, there is a device that is called a, um, uh, uh, basically it's a stool that you lift your, you put your legs on and you basically lift your legs up mm -hmm. while you have a bowel movement, mm -hmm. and that can relieve some of the straining. I can't get into the specifics of why that is on Facebook Live, right. but if you were to come down to Harbor, I could t basically tell you and show come you. Come on down. Mm -hmm. um, and then our last question, is there a medicine for hemorrhoids? No, so unfortunately, not really. So there are medications that we can try, things like gels and creams that help loosen up that region, mm -hmm. but really it's lifestyle and dietary changes, and then beyond that, it's really surgery. Right. Um, Unfortunately, modern medicine hasn't caught up to the surgical side. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for your questions. Um, and if you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And thank you, Dr. Yi, for answering our questions. Sure, no problem. Have a great one.